when things get too comfortable and you're still living with your parents and you've still got your first job and you don't want to move out because everything's too comfortable, get out. My first passion uh, before food was, uh, was football. I was always uh, a good eater, great lover of food. and I grew up uh, partly in Scotland, partly down south. So we had that sort of token of appreciation of home cooked food. Um, then I was very lucky to get on a foundation course, spending the last year of my school at a foundation course, studying maths, English two and a half days a week, and then learning to cook for two and a half days a week. And it was a sort of new experiment. Now we had trouble uh, with buying my first set of whites and chef knives, and we depended on the Banbury round table to come up with something like 85, 90 pounds that mum and dad didn't have to get my first set of whites. So um, I still remember that day now. Uh, and how ecstatic and happy I was when I got given my first set of whites, my knives, and all of a sudden I wanted to go on that mission. Football was a sort of uh, huge burning ambition, and I was trying to yeah, decide. Advice to young chefs from the age of 16 to sort of 29, 30 is 14 years of a sponge. You're absorbing knowledge. Don't take a job for the sake of money. Don't worry about earning £500 a, a month or a year more somewhere else. Go and get knowledge because that becomes a bigger passport for everything. The money will come once you've mastered your craft and you become incredibly talented. Work for big chefs and find a different level of comfort. When things get too comfortable and you're still living with your parents and you've still got your first job and you don't want to move out because everything's too comfortable, get out. Put yourself in a strange situation in the middle of Barcelona. Put yourself in the middle of Paris. Put yourself in the middle of Belgium and see what's available. And it's amazing how much confidence it gives you and more importantly, great to, to, to sort of eat and travel at the same time. Fantastic. When you get all this knowledge and the advice for young chefs that are excited about opening their own business, don't shoot too high. Restaurants become successful because they cook within the vicinity they're sat within. Don't start reaching for stars and stripes. Focus on your customers. They're your biggest critics. Secondly, keep it local. Become the best bistro. Then after the bistro, take it up a little level but make sure your customers and your brigade go up with you. Don't stand and shoot too high, they'll come back to bite you on the ass. Key to a successful business is remembering the customer's king, because without them, we're nobody. And so I, from a chef's point of view, always put myself in a customer's situation where I see it from their eyes. I don't cook for chefs. Every time chefs come into the dining room, the first thing they do is turn up the plates upside down, start photographing the food, and, and they're constantly, you know, dissecting the food as, a try, as opposed to enjoying it. So I always look at it from a customer's perspective because they're king and without them, we're history. Uh, what you need to do is establish confidence in, in, in yourself. Uh, cooking is an amazing journey and don't think you can learn it within three or four years. It's like studying medicine. It's over a 10 to 15 year period. I'm 42 years of age and I'm still learning new exciting things now that I bring back to the fold. But more importantly, vision. Um, I didn't think French was important at school and I kick myself now because I went to live in France for three years and became bilingual but I wish I'd studied harder with a second language on my own. That gives you a different culture, gives you a completely different level of confidence. Learning French, French cuisine, mannerism and cooking in a very robust, uh, tenacious way. So yeah, vision and open-mindedness and we never cut corners. The minute you start cutting corners in food, Time out. There's no worse job to have than to cut corners of food. So, attention to detail. An amazing, exciting journey. One of the very few jobs anywhere in the world that you can travel, get paid, and experience phenomenal food anywhere in the world. Brilliant. One thing I've learned and experienced is that if you don't open up and you don't delegate, then you'll kill yourself. And if there's one thing that I've managed to understand is the art of delegation. Because if I can pass on, you know, to Claire Smith, to Arian my palette, my understanding, my knowledge, then grab it, run it, and then pass it on to your team. Don't hold that inside. Stay in front of the competition. Because there's two ways in this industry. You, you move with it, or it moves you. And I've seen so many sad stories across the decade where chefs have just got lazy. Got lazy, given up, and lost that hunger to be competitive. Because it's the best job in the world. It's not really a job, it's a passion. Because when you're rubbing shoulders and here we are now 10 years later and I've got a restaurant next door to Jamie Oliver's and we're both literally two meters apart phenomenal chef and we keep each other on our toes so that's exciting for me and that's been the one key issue across the 10 years of filming Kitchen Nightmares never ever ever give up